Yo, what's up, y'all? It's MMA Analyst here to do my recap for UFC 103. But I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of caught up in all the in all the aftermath of, of the Mayweather Marquez. I know a lot of y'all don't like boxing and you know whatever would not, but you know when you're just talking about combat sports, and I just watch what I watch and watch the craziness that went down. And the aftermath and some jealous ass dudes just angry and wanting y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of you who watched will know what I'm talking about. But uh, anyways, damn y'all. <clears throat> just before I get into the UFC 103, I just want to say this: the boxing versus MMA thing doesn't need to go on anymore. It just needs to stop. And I know it's actually being perpetrated by like the biggest people in both sports. You know, Mayweather's got to pr promote his fights, so he talked bad about UFC to get, you know, just hype for his own fights. And the UFC wants to promote the UFC, so Dana's out there saying what he wants to say. And certain guys in boxing, um, announcers, commentators, big names in boxing, you know, they're worried about the state of boxing in general, not like with big money guys like Mayweather. And then the UFC is trying to come up and, you know, the biggest contact combat sport for a while has been boxing and they're trying to get that spot. So naturally you're going to have these two clashes and these two colliding, but <clears throat> it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, there's lots of sports out there that use balls and putting them in the hoops or bringing it from one spot to the next or, you know, running and whatever it has to do, like... Just because I like basketball doesn't mean I can't like football. Just because I watch, you know, the NFL doesn't mean I can't watch the NBA. And, you know, just because I like the UFC doesn't mean I can't be a big boxing fan and vice versa. And just because I like, you know, Mayweather doesn't mean I can't like Fedor. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, y'all. Had to get it off my chest. <clears throat> I was juggling. Had the one thing on the screen. Had the one thing on the computer. And I'm watching the two TV computer back four back four. It was crazy. Let's talk. Let's start right from the top. I wish I hadn't seen that damn way in y'all, cause I'd be looking crazy right now. Cause I would have been all bravado style, like three minutes. Son. He's gonna get knocked out in three minutes. And then when it went down, I wish I, I just would have came back and been like, you know, posing. But uh, that's what happened though. Um. As soon as dude got ready, Vitor Belfort, he was ready, he was ready, he's waiting, he's waiting, just getting a feel for it, you know, professionals, the top dudes, they don't just come out and go crazy, you know, they get timing, they wait for their opening, they wait for the opportunity, and then, bam, by the way, I apologize for any kind of, you know, see how all that stuff, it's just late, getting the video done, gotta do it. But uh, anyways, back to the regular program. He looked good. Uh, you know, this is something where, you know, you've got uh, this whole thing with UFC fighters versus outside fighters. And people think, you know, Vitor Belfort is not in the UFC. So, you know, he's not as good a fighter. And at one point, he wasn't as good a fighter. But even when he improved and when he grew and when he, you know, when, when he matured, a lot of people still thought, well, he wasn't fighting UFC fighters. He wasn't fighting in the cage. Therefore, what he's doing doesn't really mean as much. Which, you know, is absolutely ridiculous. A good fighter in the UFC can be a good fighter in strike force, can be a good fighter wherever. And this is a situation where you had a guy who was handling business outside of the UFC. They brought him back to the UFC. They put him up against top competition. And all it took was one offensive, one offensive move. You know, it took three minutes, but it was really one offensive decision. One decision to say, okay, now let's fight. And and it was a knockout, and it was a, it, it was a nice win. Rich Franklin, you know, he's a good fighter. What's going to happen next? You know, the fans love Rich Franklin. The UFC loves Rich Franklin. Dana loves Rich Franklin. So, he'll be all right. And he's been fighting tough guys, you know, only tough guys recently. Ever since, you know, ever since basically Anderson Silva showed up to the UFC, that weight class has changed. 
and he's getting tough fights and he's winning some and he's losing some. Can't hate on him for it. What about Vitor Belfort? Damn. Damn. There's so many good fights for him. You know, a lot of guys want to fight Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva can't fight until 2010. He's going to get some bone spurs taken out of his elbow. So he's out. Dan Henderson, you know, a lot of people want Dan Henderson to fight Nate Marquardt. I'm one of them. You know, but Dan Henderson doesn't want to fight Nate Marquardt. Dan Henderson wants a title shot. Marquardt wants a title shot. I don't know. There's a lot of good fights. Vitor Belfort wants to fight at 185. Well, then you got to, you know, get lighter again. Get Do what you got to do and, you know, just continue to improve. Sick. I mean, good performance from home to all right, up next, we got Junior DeSantos versus Mirko Krokop. Damn, y'all. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. This is not from somebody who was hating on anybody. This is from a Mirko Krokop fan. Um, I mean, he's not like in my top ten, but it's somebody I definitely like to see winning because he's exciting, da 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 blah, 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 but it's just not that way anymore. The Krokop that I liked seeing winning... That guy doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. What we have is Merkel Krokop, you know, predictable, not as strong, not as fast, older, you know. Damn, you know what I mean? Like, what's next for Merkel Krokop in the UFC? I don't know. Like, who's his next fight? I really don't know. Like, you know, like, what, is, what are you going to do? Mark Coleman, the 205. Damn. Like, what are they supposed to do? Drop down to 205? And then go in even a more stacked weight division? I really don't know what to do with Mirko Krokop when it comes to placement. Where to, you know, who for, who should he fight? I don't think he should be fighting, you know, guys like, you know, I don't want to call him scrubs. But I don't think he should be fighting scrubs. Like, I don't want to see Mirko Krokop, you know, fighting. I'm not going to say names, but I'm just saying. If Mirko Krokop is not fighting top competition, if he's not fighting guys up there, I don't want to see him fighting. And if he's just going to lose to the guys up there, then I don't want to see him just going out there and losing and waiting all around to throw three kicks and a couple, you know, straight, straight rights or a couple, you know, good jabs. You know what I mean? I don't want to see that. That's not what I want to see. I definitely don't want to see him get knee in the face and then having his vision messed up so that he can't see and just has to say, end the fight. That's not what anybody wants to see, no matter how big a Krokop fan you may be. I know you don't want to see that. Um, some guy, everybody's got to stop fighting at some point. I think that this is time for him. Junior DeSantos, what do you want to do? You know, he's got, you know, two big wins now. He beat Mirko Krokop, he beat Fabrizio Verdun. I mean, that's more than any of the other up-and-comers, any of the other guys that are getting title shot contendership and stuff like that. So, you know, he could be next in line for a title shot, maybe. Um, Noguera, he's not going to fight Noguera. That's like father's son. So that's not going down. This ain't, you know, this ain't Star Wars. So uh, I don't know really who he fights either. I mean, there are some good fights for him, but these other guys are all fighting. So he just fought. He fought a good fight. He won. You've got, obviously, in the top, you've got, you know, number one right now is the champ, which is Brock Lesnar. He's fighting Shane Carwin. Cain Velasquez is fighting Ben Rothwell. Um, Frank Mir, I don't know who he's fighting. Maybe that's a fight. Frank Mir. I don't know. Actually, he is fighting. He's fighting Chet Congo. So he's fighting Chet Congo. It's just kind of like, I don't know what's next to do, but, you know, everybody's got to keep an eye on Junior DeSantos. Martin Campman versus Paul Daly. Damn, Martin Campman. Uh, he wanted to get this fight to the ground. People thought he was going to try and stand up with Paul Daly. Um, I knew he wasn't going to try and do that. I just thought he might be able to get the fight to the ground. And then if he could get it to the ground, he'd win the fight. But he tried to throw a little too much. Tried to be a little too you know, tradey, and he needed to just go out there, jab, cross, drop levels, drop, drop levels, and try and get that takedown, and he tried a few times, Paul Daly, you know, stuffed a few average setup takedown attempts, but nothing real serious, 
Martin Campman. Damn. You know, you look on from number one contender against Mike Swick to uh to lose to Paul Daly. Damn. Uh Paul Daly came to the UFC. He's been a vet, been doing his thing. We know what his issue is. He's, his ground game is just not nearly as good as it needs to be at the level that he's at. So he needs to take this win, be happy about it, and then go train ground all day. Wrestling, jiu-jitsu, or just anti-jiu-jitsu. And like stuff and takedown, just get it done. <clears throat> but uh, both these guys, both these guys aren't going anywhere. Uh, maybe now Paul Daly will fight Swick. Maybe that's going to be what happens next. Kind of makes sense. I don't like any... I don't like Swick getting a title shot without having to fight some of these top guys, though, in his weight class. I know he's got a lot of wins, but how many quality wins does he have? So I would like to see him have to fight some of these quality guys. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Frank Trigg versus Josh Koscheck. Damn. Uh, no, dude. Absolutely not. Frank Trigg may have just signed a one-fight contract, whether he knew it or not. Frank Trigg, thank you. See you later. Too bad. Um, I mean, he's been looking all right recently in his uh, in, in his fights, but that's not what we're here to see. We're not here to see, like, you know, people come back and get beat up and then fight two more times and take up cards. The UFC needs to have good cards. And in order to have good cards, for me, I want to see top fighters. I don't need to see top fighters against, like, like number one contendership all day long and title shots all day long. I understand that you have to build up some other guys. But Frank Trigg's job in the UFC, you know, unless he could have pulled off some type of um, at least a good fight, at least, you know, something like Mark Coleman going out there, working his ass off, losing a showgun, gassing, looking horrible, then coming out, at least making it to the end of the third round, and then coming out and, you know, beating Stefan Bonner. Do something. Do something, you know what I mean? So, Frank Trigg probably, he might get cut. Like, really, is the UFC going to set up another fight with Frank Trigg? I don't think so. Josh Koscheck. You know, he got a good win, or at least he got a quick win. He got a win. So, I don't think that does much for reality in the in the machine hype. They might say stuff like, he, you know, he did this against Frank Trigg, and Frank Trigg is this. You know, hype, hype, hype. In reality, it's like he beat up an old Frank Trigg. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys from the fight. You know, let's set something up with that. But I do believe maybe Frank Trigg's gone. Hermes Frank, and now that dude is gone. What are you doing? Coming over four pounds overweight. You ever seen a fat 155-pounder in the UFC? A fat one... You look like a Cabbage Carrera or Cabbage... Cabbage Marrero? Carmelo Marrero? Cabbage Carrera? Cabbage? Cabbage. You look like Cabbage. You know a little oblong, fat-headed dude that can take all type of punishment? You know, he couldn't get knocked out with a baseball bat. Cabbage. He looked like him, but at 155, but with a purple wig on. This dude looked like the guy that you would never pick in a video game. You know what I mean? Like, when you got all your serious dudes. I'm not even talking a fighting game. I'm just talking any game. Or if it was a fighting game, it'd be like Tekken. And you're picking all your little dudes, and you got your little crazy Asian dude with the sword, and you got your black dude who does all the backflips and the, and the breakdancing, and... You got your drunken master, and you got your boxer from the states, and then you got this dude, and nobody wants to pick him because he's just fat and he's got purple hair, and it makes no sense, and he's weak, and that's what he looked like, and it was bad. He came in four pounds overweight. He actually looked. Oh, how are you going to be a hundred? Look, if you are overweight in a bigger weight class, that's fine, but how are you going to be fat? 159 pounds. 159 pounds and you're fat. He fell down when he got knocked down. And dude straight up like look fat. Now he still had a crazy ass chin. Because Griffin would just pa, ka, ka, ka. And I was like wow this guy's not going to go out there yes he's out. But uh, that's the, that was terrible. That was terrible. Now on Tyson Griffin's side of things. Great fight. Good job. You did your thing. On Hermes Franca's side of things. No disrespect, man, but dude's got to go. That is unacceptable. 
That is one of the worst performances I've ever seen from a guy who ever got a title shot. Ever. He was fighting against, dude, against Sean Shirk for a title? For, for a number one contender? Or what? For a title? It was for a title. And then, damn. Just. Wow. Um, Cole Miller versus Efrain Escudero. Good fight. Es uh, Efrain Escudero. Good fight. It was his first fight since he won the Ultimate Fighter show. Uh, Cole Miller, I believe if he would have continued to do what he did and not get too comfortable, which is difficult to do, especially if you're being successful. You're like, successful, successful, successful. And then you just kind of open it up a little. Um, I don't know if, if Escudero would have ever been able to really get in, get close, and do his thing. But uh, Cole Miller opened up. When he opened up, uh, Escudero opened up and then shut it down. Good fight. Um, good win for Escudero. Both these guys will be around. Um, Drew McFedries. Man. My man's ground game is just terrible. Terrible. I mean, I picked him. I did. I, I picked him because I thought he could go out and actually just, you know, I'm, I know people don't want to stand with him, and it was clear, like, they were, he was like, F all this standing with him stuff. I said, let me take this guy to the ground. Hmm. Damn, my bad. But, uh, you know, just get him out of here. No, di no disrespect again, but this is MMA. If you can't even bring the letters mixed, Mixed. I ain't talking about, you know, babies. We ain't talking about half and half. Mixed martial arts. All right. Not, not a uh, street fighting league or bar brawling club. All right. This is supposed to be mixed martial arts. You're supposed to have some wrestling. You're supposed to have at least knowledge of jujitsu. You're supposed to be able to do something. Not just go out there. Telegraph every punch. Telegraph. Like he was. That's a pen. He was doing this. That's a stamp. The stamp on it. Ow. He writing. Dear Thomas Durrell. I'm planning on hitting you in a few moments. As soon as I finish writing this letter. Sign. Drew McFedries. Like, dog, that was terrible. Drew McFedries got to go. Um, and then the rest of the card, you know, it was all right from what I saw. Um, I thought there was going to be, um, I thought this fight was going to be like a lot of decisions, but on the main card, on the main card, these guys came out and whooped ass quick. And they were like, we got to show some long-ass undercards, and we got time for it, too. Uh, there were 13 fights on the card. That's because they had the, uh, you know, they had the undercard, then they had the Spike TV portion of the undercard, then they had the main card. I like that. Do that more, UFC. Do that more. Um, I was really interested. Just, just, it's just funny because, you know, when people are watching the undercard, you want people watching Spike TV to then go turn on the UFC. You don't want to put on anything interesting. I was like, I wonder what they'll put on, you know. They ain't going to put on any UFC content. They're not going to put on any fights. They ain't even going to put on a 10,000 ways to die. They don't want anything interesting. You know, they just want you to just turn the TV off and, or maybe order the pay-per-view or do something. But they don't want you watching that. They put on a roadhouse with, like, the R.I.P. Patrick Sweeney style. I'm not Catholic, so I don't know how it works. But they did the R.I.P. Patrick Swayze style, put on Roadhouse, and they're like, but you want to watch Roadhouse or fighting? So that was kind of funny. I thought they might put an infomercial for, like, cooking. Like, you know, like, mm, there's so-and-so teaching you how to cook. But anyways, y'all, pretty half-decent night of fights. I got 9 out of 13, so 9 and 4. It's okay, it's okay. Um... Welcome back, Vitor Belfort. At least welcome back to the UFC. I mean, I saw your last fight live. I was there, Scott. Woo, woo, woo. But uh, anyways, Vitor Belfort, welcome back. Uh, Mirko Krokop, R.I.P. Man, R.I.P. Just everybody, you know what I mean? Just be realistic. R.I.P. 
Um, Paul Daly, welcome to the United States, or at least to the UFC, because you already came over and got submitted by, by Shields, I believe. Frank Trigg, damn dog, just do the radio show. Um, Hermes Franca, that's what he looked like. He looked like a, like, what's it called? Um, a, tre a treasure troll. He looked like a purple-haired treasure troll with the fat in the middle. That's exactly what he looked like. Hermes, the treasure troll, Franca. And don't be mad at me for just speaking the truth. All right? If people are going to go out there and be professional fighters and get paid money and come out looking like a treasure troll and, and fat at 155 pounds, then I can say what the F I want. Escadero, good job. McFedries, Doug. It was there was never a time when it was good to not have a ground game in the UFC. The UFC started out with jujitsu overall, like jujitsu wins in the beginning, and then wrestlers came in and jujitsu guys had to worry about that. Every now and then you'd have strikers, and then people started to round out their game. It was never cool to just be a puncher. So just go figure something out. Rest of the card. Oh, Vladimir Matashenko came back. Forgot about that. Congrats to Vladimir Matashenko with the win. Rafael Dos Anjos finally got a UFC win. Um, Money Mayweather, son. Crazy fight. And then after that, for the people who didn't see, after that, Kellerman was talking all types of stuff, and then Mosley came on, and they did enough. This wasn't like, you're going to get knocked the F out. Watch. Watch. It wasn't like Rampage and Thing where it was kind of planned. And they were all in his other space. It was like Kellerman was like, ah, nah, don't do it, guys. Don't do it. Because you know these <clears throat> rich-ass ghetto dudes will all start fighting. And Kellerman will just be in the middle. like The only dude that don't fight. And, and you know, Bernard Hopkins, the ex-con, was in the background, with, you know, flexing his whatever. And... And Mayweather was actually just trying to be like, yo, like, don't come up there. I don't come up in your fight, you know. And then he was like, you talk too much. And then Kellerman actually took the mic and threw it back down. He should have let Mayweather talk. That was kind of, that was kind of messed up. Cause I just said too, just before that happened, I was like, yo, I like Kellerman. I like Max Kellerman. And then as soon as he went, he done effed up and acted like a damn fool. Asked the questions that people wanted to hear though. But, uh, but anyways, you know what it is, though. It's all about MMA. It's important. 